Right, sink and hob cutting out. I stripped the sink back, took the tap off. I lay that down upside down on there, put loads of backing tape, masking tape around so that I can draw around it and then I'll come in 10, 15 mil or whatever. It, it's got quite a wide lip on that, so 15 mil, something like that. I don't know about the hob. It's still there in its package. Work that out when I get to it. Normally cutting these holes out, I'd either use jigsaw. Got a chance of chipping there. The masking tape won't stop it chipping. That's like an old wives tale that is. Jigsaw, you can get down cutting blades, but they can jump around if you if you hit a bit of a snag. Router, I did bring some strips of nine mil ply. So I can make myself like a template, run around with the router. That gives a nice clean cut. But I presume that the double-sided tape was in the van and I can't find it. So I'm going to use the plunge saw. I haven't done one for over a year or so and this had the Makita blade in it. It was quite a new blade. It was a replacement that I bought. And this time, when I replaced the blade, I just went for the Freud blade and it's done quite well but I haven't done a workshop with it. Not a laminated one anyway like this so I've just tested it on this off cut. I had the track on this side so the chip guard was here so I got a nice fairly clean cut. This side that didn't have the chip guard on it's chipped a little bit but seeing as I don't want to cut it out with jigsaw I don't want to go home to find the double sided tape. I'm going to risk it, give it a go. This is where it all could go tits up. So I've got that sat on top of there, masking tape on the face. Got a few marks, transferred the cabinet through. So it should pass. That should pass. That one should clear. So what I'll do is draw around this. Then lift it up and put another mark that distance in and that'll be my cut line right so that's the line that i drew around the sink this is one that i put inside i've gone half inch 12 mil the corners need round enough so i'll just put a line straight through so when i sit the track on here i'll be able to see where i need to stop that it's fairly obvious but and I put little marks just to remind me which line to go to and cut to the wrong line which is so easy to do right, I've just done the back one that's quite good no chips not that I can see but clean the corners up with jigsaw just carefully very carefully couldn't show you that one but I'll show you this one see on this corner very little timber there so I'll have to be careful. I've got it sat up on some timbers. Could do with a longer track with that. Just get this one on. Some little marks here that I'm working off to try and go near the corner. Stopping at starting points.
Uh, we've got my standard jigsaw blade back in. Just taking it very careful. I'm going to cut this one first. Then it's free. Then when I cut the others, it's not going to snap this corn off. That should be free. So when I cut those, it shouldn't it shouldn't affect this joint. That's the plan. I think that's free now. Fitted all right. I'd already chopped out some of the the base unit here, and now I've got to try and get these clips on that go all the way around the inside here. This one's not so bad. I'll have to drag the washing machine out to do those. The ones at the back there, the worktops flush with the cabinet. So we'll see how that goes. And these ones are on this edge. I can't even see. And I can't see these ones either. Could probably have done with going back 20 mil. But then this hits that backboard. So you know the backboard there, the cabinet. Anyway, I'll lift it up, put these clips on and then I'll probably have to just chop a little bit out of the cabinet here and there so that the worktop will sit back down. It's supposed to be a grey sticky tape. It was on the windowsill and I can't find it anywhere. I've searched two or three times in everything. So it's silicone, silicone around the edge. Right, that's in. I'll clean off the excess silicone when it's a bit drier. I'll just run a blade around and it'll peel off like a rubber band. Got silicone on my hands. That's the stuff that causes fish eyes if you're not careful. One little atom on the paint, make a fish eye. It's on my tools because it's on my hands. So, get the hob cut in. I've got to trim it to length first. Put the end on, stick the strip on the end. Right, I'm going to cut this work top to length. But I'm only taking off about that much. I should really flip it off and cut it from the other side, but I can't get my track on that little piece there. So what I'm going to do is do a little test cut, trim this end off, see how it see what it looks like. Track will be on here with chip guard. It's how this little corner here deals with the saw. At the worst, I'll run the router along, clean that edge up. I'm letting it overhang by about 20 mil, so I can I can lose a few, a few mil if I want to. All right, just took a little bit off. It's not great. It's chipped here and there. But I've decided to go for it this way. I've given myself five mil so that I can run it out real long. I've clamped this down with my clamps underneath. So hopefully, if I press on there, that chip guard will be down. Right, 
out just like before. We've always got a 30 mil collet, half inch bit. So if I put a mark there at 10 mil, that should take about two mil off there. Actually, if I make a mark about half inch, 12 mil in. If I clamp my worktop jig there and run the collet along this edge, I should be able to just trim that edge off. Right, so I'm going to set this full depth and just steadily do one complete pass. It's a nice sharp edge on there now. It's a nice crisp edge. And I've got this stick on there. This needs sanding just to remove the any little bits. You don't want to sand the laminate at the top, you want to stop short. So I use my fingers to run along the bottom there. You see all the little bits that are coming off. Same again, you don't want to sand the end then, you just want to sand the wood. This is contact adhesive it's glue. Comes with a little little spreader. Don't know if I'll use that, but you can make one. Use a piece of this this laminate. Put some saw cuts in it with a hacksaw. smelly stuff this when you're putting it on make sure you get some along that edge and the bottom edge of course and try to put it on evenly you don't want lumps in it. Right, I'm going to leave that for 10-15 minutes and that'll soak in. I'll give that another coat and then I'll put some on the edging strip as well. Right, that's dry to the touch. Acetone will get any any of the excess off the face here. I'm going to give it another coat and put some on the back of this as well. Alright, that's dry to the touch now. I'm going to stick this on with the majority on the bottom. Just a little bit sticking over the top. use a piece of wood just to push it on be careful you don't cockle over the edge so that you crack it especially at the front here I'm going to clean this off with a little flush trim router I've got a little wheel that does the same sort of thing but I think that's in the shed I'm just going to try it on the back here. I've done the underneath and it seems flush. I'm just going to do it underneath. And I've only got in just enough 
cutter showing. I've only got just enough cutter showing just to trim the laminate. Right, so there's just a little bit left. I'm going to run the file over it. Files have got two edges, a smooth edge and a sharp edge. I'm going to run the sharp edge against this. And I'm going to file in and then lift. You don't want to back off, you don't want to drag it off. Slightly at an angle as well. Use your fingernails. If you can still feel it, then just file it a bit more. I'm lifting every time. It looks like I'm just going like that, but I'm lifting every time. I'm just cutting the hob out, the camera didn't film it but it's a very nice neat cut all the way around. So I'll just whip the corners off with jigsaw. That was close. Oh, looking good, but this is a 900 hob going on an 800 unit and just there is the gas pipe and it's hitting that. Right, not pretty, I'm going to put this drawer back in make sure it works. But the plumber will want plenty of space to work in there. Noisy came, noisy saw came out for wire. And I've taken the screws out of the back of this cabinet. So I'll just be able to lower the legs and pull that out. The plumber's coming Tuesday, so that's why I'm doing this today. But I'll be able to lower the legs, pull that out. He can sort his, there's just a pipe at the bottom there, there's a tail on the floor. Down there, just at the back there, it's just a pipe. Comes to about there, he needs to run it up. He can bring it over to this corner, leave a spur out. I'll put this cabinet back in. I'm not going to fix down the top so, so I can lift it if I need to. Fix it all in place, and then the hob can go in and he can plumb it in. That's plan A. I'm going to glue that joint together now. 
put this back in there so you can work it out on his pipe there why he's got clearance I know the drawer comes to about here but it's 450 long so the drawer comes to about there it depends how high it is, I don't think it's that high, I think it's about that, so you might have to make quite a tight bend there. I didn't have to cut it out so much, but Sod's Law says that I'll have to cut some more out when he turns up. Anyway, I'm going to glue that joint together. I'm going to use this PU glue, it's waterproof. And this worktop came with colour fill, I think it's acrylic. I don't know, it's black anyway. You put a little line along this top edge, then as the worktop comes together, any little gap will get filled by that. It comes with a little bottle of solvent, and that dries quite quickly. And then of course worktop bolts underneath with a 10mm span. Right, that went to the drawer, right? I need to clean some of the black stuff off the joint there. I'll leave the sink for now, the rest of it, anyway, the taps and everything. Hob's just in loose. But that's everything ready for the plumber now, Tuesday. I've made the doors at home for these tall units here. I just need to finish putting the top coat of the grey on. So I'll see if I can get that done tomorrow. But I'm up here Tuesday, so Wednesday, so Thursday. It's coming together, it's nearly there.